Hello friend, welcome back to Eat Your Homestead. I went to Costco yesterday, I had to do some grocery shopping, and I need to deal with some of this stuff. I thought that we would deal with this, since I have to bring all of this stuff downstairs into the food storage room. We'll deal with this, we'll bring it down, we'll go grocery shopping for tonight's dinner, because we are gonna make sweet and sour chicken. This recipe is a sweet and sour chicken I used to make all the time when Josh and I first got married, and I found Pinterest. <laughs> it was one of the first Pinterest recipes I ever found. I have adapted the sauce recipe a little bit, but I haven't made it in forever because it does take a little bit of time and I've been craving it. So I thought that we would make it together tonight. And then we are gonna make some brown butter Rice crispy treats too today so that I can give them to the landscapers. And I have all the ingredients I bought. I bought the Rice Krispies for something at some point. I don't know why I bought them, but they've been sitting in my pantry and I thought that Brown butter Rice Krispie treat sounded really good. I thought it would be a nice different take on a Rice Krispie, kind of elevate it a little bit. Cause I, I'm not a big fan of, I, I love just plain Rice Krispies, but I thought I wanted to kind of juice them up a little bit, but I don't really like peanut butter and chocolate with my Rice Krispies. And that was a lot of the recipes I was finding. And then one of my friends gave me the idea about brown butter Rice Krispie treats and I thought, we're gonna give that a try because brown butter with anything is fantastic. But first, I need to deal with some of this bulk stuff that I got at Costco. I actually didn't get these tortillas at Costco, I got these at Winco, but we can't go through 80 tortillas at one time before they are gonna go bad. So I'm gonna freeze these tortillas. Tortillas freeze beautifully. I'm just gonna take a big chunk of tortillas about how much we would need for dinner plus some leftovers. I wrap them in one layer of saran wrap just for extra protection, and then I'm gonna put them in my reusable silicone bags. These are my favorite things, I love these so much. And I can link them down below if you are interested in them. But we're going to go ahead and just take one piece of saran wrap. I think that we'll probably get enough for three. I don't have any plans to make tacos right now, but I like to keep these on hand because tacos are one of Josh and I's favorite foods. And when I'm in the mood for tacos, I wanna make sure I have what I need to make tacos. So I'm just gonna go one stack like that. And we're gonna get enough for about three, three dinners and leftovers here. You know what, I'm not gonna put a piece of saran wrap on that one, I'm just gonna take my bag, twist it, and put this whole thing in here. It, I just like to have the two layers just so that we don't worry about getting any freezer burn or anything on our tacos. I do know how to make tortillas from scratch, but I don't always want to do that. So I like to have these in the freezer when necessary. So we got one project done already. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to freeze juice. Now you might think this is weird. This is mango nectar and it is a one gallon <laughs> Jug. Josh and I don't drink very much juice at all, but I am now making a ton of kombucha. I love mango kombucha. This was a great price at Costco, but this is way more than we need for flavoring our kombucha. So when I used to make kombucha all the time, this is what I would do. I would buy a juice and then I would put it in mason jars, wide mouth mason jars. You can freeze in glass. You wanna make sure that you freeze in wide mouth you can freeze in regular mouth too, but the only glass jars I've ever broken from freezing in them are regular mouth because they don't allow for as much expansion. And you want to leave a lot of head room. I'm leaving almost half the jar, which is way more than you need, but I have enough jars. I have the freezer space right now. So I'm just going to play it on the safe side and I'm going to leave quite a bit of head room. Maybe about one third the jar of head room. And then I do want to leave some out because I I'm gonna be making some kombucha here pretty soon and I thought mango flavor would be really good. The last flavor we did together was strawberry. So good, we've already drank it. Josh absolutely loved it. Now I'm gonna put this in the fridge. And this is, oh, I guess it's organic. I didn't even realize it. Bonus, this is organic mango juice. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and we will make mango kombucha next time we make kombucha, which will be in just a couple days. But. I am loving having homemade kombucha on hand again. We're not canning this like I said, but I am gonna put a canning lid on the top. These are ones that have already been used, but they've been washed. 
and we'll just get the lid on, a ring on, and then I will put these in the freezer and we can pull one out whenever we wanna make mango flavored kombucha. You can do this with any juice you want. I like pomegranate kombucha too, and so this is what I used to do all the time with flavoring my kombucha, and I would do pomegranate. I got some coffee, I need to just refill this, because we were out. I just have this tub here, all of the things we're gonna bring downstairs putting in this tub so I can just carry it all down at once. Another thing I got at Costco were some, what are they called? Dishwasher tabs. They were $4 off a container. So I bought two because it was limit two. So I saved myself $8. They don't expire. And that's one thing I like to do when things are on sale is buy what I can and then save the difference. So we have one more thing that I want to do. And part of that is also meal prep for dinner tonight. So I gotta go out into the outside fridge and grab the chicken for prepping the chicken for dinner. Plus I'm gonna prep some for the freezer. I used to do this all the time. It's been a long time since I've done this and I'm excited to share it with you. So when I was at Costco, I bought some chicken because I need a chicken for tonight. I really wanted to make this dinner and I'm running low on chicken down in my food storage room. I buy most of my chicken through Butcher Box, but I'm almost out and I was at Costco, so I went ahead and bought it. And I thought since this is fresh chicken, I can actually prep this how I used to prep chicken all the time when I would buy it fresh at Costco. So let me show you what I do. So there's two things I like to do. One of them is I like to, which I haven't done this in a long time. I used to always do this. Anytime I bought fresh chicken, I would bring it home. A lot of times I don't have fresh chicken anymore because I buy it frozen and so I don't have fresh chicken. But I have fresh chicken today so I wanna share this with you. So when I get it home, I just got these new knives. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. I, when I get it home, I open up the package. But these are chicken thighs, that's not what I want first. This is probably one of the sharpest knives I have ever worked with. It is absolutely incredible. So when I get the chicken home, I take it out and I dice it in the different styles of dice that I like to cook with. So sometimes when I cook, I like really thin slices of chicken for when I'm making like pad thai or stir fry or something like that. And then I take that and I put that in the a Ziploc bag and I freeze it. And then when I want chicken that's thinly sliced, it's already prepped for me, so I just saved myself a step. So today, for today's dinner, we need diced chicken. We need about one inch pieces of chicken. So what I'm gonna do is go through and I'm gonna cut any excess fat or anything off, and then I'm gonna cut this chicken into one inch pieces for dinner tonight. We need about three or four chicken breasts. This makes wonderful leftovers. And so I wanna make enough so that we can have some for lunches later in the week or maybe for dinner later in the week. This is a Japanese knife. And I do have a discount code for this if you're interested. This is cutting this chicken like there's nothing to it at all. I love these things because I can put raw meat into them without having to touch the outside of the bag. So here's our chicken for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna pop that in the fridge in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and prep some more chicken for these bags. And I think I'm going to go ahead and prep just some diced chicken, just like we did for that chicken for dinner tonight in here. And we can get this directly into these bags. I'm not gonna do anything else with them except dice them up put them in here so that next time I want to make this sweet and sour chicken, I don't have to go through the effort of trimming anything off the chicken breast or dicing them or anything. I can just go straight from thawing them out to making the sweet and sour 
chicken, which I'm really excited to share with you because, like I said, this recipe is fantastic. I may have made it for, I may have found it when Josh and I were dating, not when we were first married, because when we were dating, I would do a lot of cooking for him, and I loved looking on Pinterest at the time and finding new recipes, and it's probably when I actually really learned a lot of my cooking techniques and skills was when we were dating. All right, so this is all of the chicken breast now going into this bag. And so I now have that. I can close that up in just a second. But the next thing I want to do, we're going to go ahead and now deal with the chicken thighs. I like, just like the, the chicken breast, I like to trim off any excess fat. My favorite way now to cook chicken thighs is on the grill. I absolutely love it. And I love having marinated meat in my freezer. You all know that. So what I'm going to do is we are going to trim these chicken thighs. We're going to stick, we're going to divide them evenly between these three bags. And then we're going to go ahead and make a marinade and put a marinade in each one of these. And then we'll pop them directly into the freezer. So this is another way to get some freezer meals into your freezer without having to dedicate an entire day or afternoon to doing it. This just takes a few minutes when you get home from the store or the next day. I Like I said, I went to Costco yesterday, but I did not have time to deal with this yesterday, but I have a few minutes right now and I already have my hands chickeny. I've got a cutting board that's dirty. I have a knife that's dirty. It's not gonna take me much more time to go ahead and process these chicken thighs as it did to process those chicken breasts. So we're gonna get when you purchase this at Costco, you get two for six bags. So I'm going to put two bags worth of chicken thighs in each one of these bags. I just got the counters cleaned off really nice. And I was able to, I, I found some more chicken in there in the container that I missed. So I got one bag of thinly sliced chicken like I was talking about that I use for stir fries or pad thai. And I like to freeze them nice and flat so that they thaw really quickly. So we've got our thinly sliced chicken. This is our diced chicken, our little bit larger dice. This is a larger dice than I would use for, say, a pasta or something like that. This is more if I'm going to cook the chicken and I want it in bite-sized pieces. So same thing, I'm going to, I'll need this to carry all the, the chicken down. I'm gonna pat this nice and thin so that it thaws quicker. And while I was prepping all the chicken, because I have three containers of chicken thighs prepped that we can put marinades on, I was trying to think, what do I want to marinate these chickens in? And the first one we're gonna do is my lemon, also known as smashed chicken recipe, because I have all these fresh lemons that need to be used up. So this is gonna be the first recipe we're gonna do, and I've never put this recipe on chicken thighs before. I've only ever done it with chicken breast, but I'm kind of excited to give it a try. So we have the juice of three lemons here, and we're gonna go ahead and make the marinade right in the bag because I don't want to dirty a dish by making the marinade in a dish and then pouring it into a bag. We'll just make it right in here, and then we can mix it all together in this bag. I'm all about trying to reduce as many dishes just like splash, bleh, just splash me in the face. All about reducing as many dishes as possible. We've got our lemon in there. The secret ingredient to this recipe is the Worcestershire sauce. About a quarter of a cup. And that's almost empty, so I'm just gonna use the rest of that bottle. Pepper. Salt. I'm just eyeballing today but I do have the written recipe linked down below. This is olive oil. Optional is some red pepper flakes. Some homegrown oregano. Maybe a little bit more. And some of our homegrown garlic puffs. I'm gonna plop two of those in there. And here is our lemon chicken ready to go in the freezer. I'm just going to close this. I'm gonna get as much air out as possible. I'm gonna massage that together. 
we're gonna lay it flat and one recipe done. The next one we're gonna do is honey mustard because it's one of our favorites and we absolutely love it. So I'm gonna make two of those. We're gonna start with honey and we're gonna add mustard. And I just realized I don't have enough mustard to make two of these. So this one I'm gonna have to switch up and I'm gonna make a honey ginger marinade. But we'll finish the honey mustard first. I like to use a grainy mustard for this. So it's equal parts honey and mustard. Again, I'll link the written recipe down below. Some red pepper flakes. Salt. I'm gonna go ahead and add salt into here since that's almost gone. I'll put pepper in here too. Put pepper in here as well. Some oregano and oil. And I'm gonna put one garlic puck in there. I'm gonna put the rest of this oil in this container. And then when I go downstairs, I'll grab some oil to refill this. For our honey ginger marinade, I'm gonna add a puck of garlic to that as well. Along with a good amount of ginger. Some soy sauce. Some Korean red pepper flakes. We'll do two big pinches of that. And maybe a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. I just totally made up this honey sesame or honey ginger chicken with just ingredients that I had on hand. That's kind of one of the fun things about keeping ingredients on hand is you can just roll with the punches. I probably have more grainy mustard in the food storage room. So when we're down there, I'll look for it. But I didn't feel like running down there to go grab it just to make an extra one of the honey mustard chicken since I already had one. And it's kind of good to have kind of an Asian style marinate in the freezer too because I don't have any teriyaki chicken or anything like that in my freezer right now. And so this makes a really easy dinner. Cook up some rice, steam some broccoli, and there's dinner. So we've got that done. That was our honey. I need to still label these. I have not labeled these, if you've noticed. It's easier to label your bags before you put your chicken in it, but I didn't do that. So I'll do it in just a minute before I bring them into the freezer. But I do like to make sure I try to mix them up pretty good so that when they thaw in my refrigerator, the marinade is covering the entire piece of chicken and then it can marinate in the chicken. So what I like to do is pull these out, usually the night before or the morning of and let them thaw so that they can sit and marinate all day while you're going about your day. And you don't have to think in the morning, oh, I want to grill some meat, I need to make up a marinade. I already have it ready to go, I just have to thaw it and then I have some delicious, delicious dinners right here. Honey mustard chicken is Josh and I's favorite. We just absolutely love it. It's so good. And it's really good with pork too, pork tenderloin, so yummy. So I need to get all this stuff put away. Nice thing about doing this too is a lot of these recipes had the same ingredients. And so I only had to get them out one time. And I now have three main dishes prepped. And then I have some chicken prepped for whatever I wanna cook with in the freezer ready to go. So I'm gonna go label these and then I'm gonna stick these in the freezer. Oh, I did wanna mention, I don't like using my silicone bags when I use raw meat. That's just my personal preference because I just, I would rather not use raw meat with those. So that is why I'm using just Ziploc bags today. So I'm gonna label these and I'm gonna get these in the freezer. I'm gonna freeze those marinated meats flat on that cookie sheet. Once they're frozen, I will stand them up on their side so that they take up less room in my freezer. Let's see, what should we do now? We should probably go put all this stuff away. I have a pile of ingredients here. It's only gonna take me a second to put this away. And then I'm gonna go 
ahead and bring this downstairs. You know, I think I'm gonna put these tortillas in this upstairs fridge because I have all my other tortillas, or not fridge, freezer, in there. I think it would be good to have all my tortillas in one spot. So here is where I have my flour tortillas and I'm just gonna stick my corn tortillas on top of that so that all the tortillas are in one area and that will just make my life easier and more organized. So here I have the tray of marinated meats freezing right there and then once they're frozen, I'll stack them up this way down here and so that they just take up less space down here. Now that it's grilling season coming up, well, I kind of grilled all winter, but I want to grill a ton this year. I want to make sure I always have stuff ready to go marinated in the freezer so I can just pull it out and I can make a really easy dinner. Time to clean this up. I need a couple of these ingredients for the dinner tonight, but I think I'm going to go ahead. This is empty, so I need to grab a... We emptied two things actually. We emptied soy sauce and wish to share. So I need to write a list of things I need to grab from downstairs so I don't forget because we're basically going grocery shopping down there. So we need soy sauce, wish to share. We need ketchup, I think, for the sweet and sour sauce. Never mind, I have one in here and I don't want to bring one up if I have one up here. Let's see, vinegar's up here. I have all the ingredients for the brown butter rice krispies up here. Oh, I need eggs. Eggs are down there. I have a, I have a bunch of eggs down there. Eggs, garlic, soy sauce, distilled vinegar. Oh, we need um, sriracha. I have homemade sriracha down there that we need to use. I have homemade ketchup downstairs that we could use, but I have a store-bought Portland ketchup that I think I'm gonna go ahead and use up first because I already have that open up in my fridge. And I think that's all we need, but I don't want to go down there. I don't want to make multiple trips down there if I can avoid it. So, oh, mustard, because I used all the mustard too. I'm pretty sure I have mustard down there. On my list of canning projects is to make homemade mustard. I used to make it all the time. I haven't had any homemade mustard in a long time. And so at some point here coming up, I want to get some homemade mustard on my pantry shelf. I got this kitchen tidied back up and I grabbed a container because we also need to grab rice. I didn't put that on my list, but I'll remember we need rice. Let's go, let's go shopping. I hope that idea is helpful for you if you buy a lot of fresh meat from the grocery store. I tend not to have very much fresh meat around because I do buy a lot of my meat from local farmers. And so when I go pick that up from the butcher, it's frozen and I do buy a lot of chicken that's frozen. So I don't always have the opportunity to have fresh meat where I can go ahead and get it marinating straight from when I get it in the grocery store. But it's really helpful when I do have that opportunity. And I am just really glad I've got a couple meats in the freezer ready to go whenever I need a quick dinner. So now I am just putting everything away that I got at Costco and grabbing a few things that I need for dinner tonight. We are going to make, like I said, one of our favorite meals and it's been so long since I've made this so I'm excited to share this recipe with you. It is super delicious and it's easy. It just is a little bit of labor intensive for the first part because we do, we're gonna make homemade kind of like chicken nuggets. And so that does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it every once in a while. So on this day, I take the time to go ahead and do that. I am gonna get some rice out of my bulk rice container. And then now I have everything I need. I'm just measuring it out to make sure I have the correct amount. And then we'll go upstairs and we will get dinner and dessert going. I just had an idea. I think you, you all gave me this idea but I think I'm gonna implement it is I need to keep a clipboard down there, like a master list of when things run out because I grabbed the last of my Worcestershire, the last of my soy sauce, and the last of my mustard down there. And so what I should do is have a master list down there so that when I grab the last of something, I put that on the list and then this is some homemade sriracha. I put that on the list and then I know to buy it so that I don't ever run out of it. 
So we got all of our ingredients and our eggs here. I did go collect the eggs. We're getting about six to seven eggs a day, which is amazing. Plenty for Josh and I and plenty to share. This is a cool basket. It collapses. I got this as a gift and it's pretty nifty. It came in two sizes. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get going on the Rice Krispies first because it's getting a little late in the day and I wanna make sure that these are done and ready to go so I can gift them to the landscapers before they head out for the day. And then once these are done, we'll get going on our dinner. So the first thing we need is one cup of butter, which is two sticks, and we need to brown this butter. So I'm gonna get this going first and then I'm gonna grab my marshmallows and my Rice Krispies. That brown butter is gonna take a few minutes. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get a couple things prepped. I just sprayed our dish that we're gonna put our Rice Krispies in. And then I'm gonna prep the dredge for the sweet and sour chicken. This right here is why I don't make this very often because it's a little bit of an extra step, but it's worth it every once in a while and I'm really excited to have, have it. So, this is tapioca starch. The recipe, the original recipe calls for using cornstarch, but I don't have cornstarch and tapioca starch works just as good. So we're gonna use that. I wanna season my cornstarch really well with some salt and pepper. So we're gonna get that in there. This is how the chicken is gonna be seasoned right here. And then we need four eggs. So I'm gonna get those over here. Oh, it was hailing just a minute ago and I thought it was hailing. I thought that's what that sound was, but it's our butter starting to brown. So the butter is brown, so I'm gonna turn the heat way, 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 way down. Last thing I want to do is burn. Yeah, it's definitely burned. So now we're going to add some vanilla. Salt. Mini marshmallows, one whole packet. This definitely looks different than when I make Rice Krispies because there's just so much more butter in it. Seems like a lot of butter, but this recipe had great reviews. So we're going with it. I just reread the recipe. It's two bags of mini marshmallows. So I'm gonna get, thankfully I have more marshmallows. I have one bag here that I had already opened. We made some more cookie bars. So I'm gonna get that in here and then I'm gonna open this bag. I have some jumbo marshmallows and I'll maybe put like I don't know, five or six in there to make up for that open bag. But that seems like a lot of butter. So the butter doesn't want to mix in with the marshmallows. I think I have to turn the heat up just a little bit to get all those marshmallows melted. So let me reread the recipe again just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, it says once you have brown butter, add the vanilla, salt, marshmallows to the pan, reduce to low, stir, Constantly until marshmallows have completely melted. Remove from heat and add Rice Krispies. All right. It doesn't look like the butter wants to fully mix in with the marshmallows, but you can definitely see the brown on the marshmallows from the, the brown butter. But you can see how there's so much butter that doesn't really want to seem to, to mix in, but we'll see what happens. These big marshmallows are gonna take a minute to melt. Probably should have cut them up a little bit before I stuck them in here. Oh, there we go, it's starting to mix in now. I think I'm gonna turn the heat down even lower. I'm just waiting on those jumbo marshmallows to melt, so I'm gonna get my Rice Krispies open so that they will be ready for me when I am ready to add them. And I need a measuring spoon. I'm gonna use my two cup measuring spoon here. We are almost there. I think I might just take it off the heat now. It smells really good. 
Okay, all the marshmallows have melted. So now we add whoop, 10 cups. So that's two, four, six, eight. It's actually nine cups we're supposed to add, but I just added 10. I'm just spraying my spatula a little bit. I've already taken a bite of it. This is by far the best Rice Krispie I have ever eaten. The salt, the butterscotchiness you get from the brown butter I mean, I like Rice Krispies. Plain Rice Krispies are delicious. This is out of this world. So easy, so good. I cannot wait for Josh to try this tonight and for the landscapers to enjoy it. Oh my goodness, the salt. I don't think I've ever added salt to Rice Krispies either. So good. The benefit of being the cook so I got to scrape the bowl and the spatula. Now, we're gonna let this cool. We're gonna cut it and let the landscapers enjoy it. That made a huge pan, incredible. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get dinner going, but I do need to clean up my mess. We already prepped dinner, a lot of dinner. Dinner's not gonna take very much time now to pull together. There's no more in this bowl. I want there to be more in this bowl. This is so good. All right, we are making fantastic progress today. We're getting so much done. I actually spent the morning in the garden this morning. It wasn't raining for about 45 minutes. I was able to run out there and get some lettuce and peas planted, which is really exciting. I'm really ready for some fresh garden produce and fresh like English peas or not English peas, like sugar snap peas are my favorite thing to snack on in the garden. Okay, <laughs> I just wrestled with my Instant Pot. We're gonna cook our rice in the Instant Pot. This is just some sticky rice. I'm gonna make our sweet and sour sauce in this. That's why I wanna get this going. So I am gonna cook three cups of rice so we have plenty of leftovers. I'm gonna add three cups of water. Push the rice setting and I'm gonna let it go. Now we're gonna make the sauce in here. My rice has come up to pressure, which is great. I did go ahead and get some oil in a pan because we are going to pan fry the chicken bits and then we're gonna finish it off in the oven. I'll show you how that goes. I just washed up and took the little tails off some green beans because for a side tonight, we're gonna have um, rice and green beans. I love to have a green veggie whenever I make anything with rice and chicken and I just really like that. So we're gonna get the oven preheated because we're gonna finish this in the oven, but we do need to go ahead and make the sauce. Now I always double this sauce recipe because I just don't find one recipe is enough. So we're gonna start with one cup of just white distilled vinegar and this does call for a lot of sugar. So we're gonna put for a double recipe, one and a half cups of sugar. This is how you get your sweet and sour. The next ingredient is a half a cup of ketchup. This is what makes it red, obviously. And that bottle is basically done. I don't want to waste any of that, so I think I'm gonna pour some of this vinegar in the bottle. 
We're just gonna use the rest of that ketchup. Try to get a, as much of it out as we can. Then two tablespoons of soy sauce, so that's one, two. And this is where I deviate from the recipe. I like to add sriracha, this is homemade sriracha. I think just a little bit of heat helps balance the sweet and sourness of this recipe. So we're gonna, I think I'm gonna take this from the top because it's nice and thick and beautiful. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna do a little splash there. Not too much, I don't wanna make it too spicy. And then we're gonna whisk that together. Josh has no idea that I'm making this. And it, like I said, when we first got married, I would make this pretty regularly. So I'm sure he's gonna be really excited when he finds out that this is what we're having for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna start getting this oil preheated because we need it warm in order to pan fry our chicken. Our oil is heated, so I've got my little dredging station here. We've got our chicken, our salted pepper cornstarch or tapioca starch, and our egg. And I'm gonna dredge all this right here. And then I also got out the baking dish. After the chicken is done pan frying, then we're gonna put it in our baking dish. And we're gonna finish baking the chicken in the oven. So when we put it in the pan here, we're not looking to cook the chicken necessarily all the way through. We're just looking to get a nice crust on it. So I'm gonna take the time to dredge every piece of chicken in our cornstarch and then our egg. It kind of creates this really yummy, crusty egg outside. It's so good. I will cook them both on, I will cook them each on both sides. So I'm gonna let them cook for a few minutes, get nice and brown on one side, and then I'll flip them, and then we'll get them in our baking dish. And then I'm not gonna pour our sauce on it until I have them all cooked. Oh, but I just did this one backwards. So we're supposed to end with the egg, and it kind of creates this really yummy egg outside. It's so good. So I have one hand that is corn starchy, and then I have one hand that's eggy. I forgot a way easier way to do this than doing one piece of chicken at a time because it's been so long since I've made this recipe, is take about eight or 10 pieces of chicken, put them in the cornstarch mixture, get them completely coated, and then take those pieces of chicken and put all of them in the egg mixture, mix that up, and then you can take your tongs and you can use your tongs to put the individual pieces of chicken in your oil. And then once they've browned really well on one side, you then can flip them over. You're not looking to completely cook your chicken here. You're really just looking to brown them and make a nice crust because once we have all of them cooked, we are going to put them in a 350 degree oven after we pour the sauce on top. And we're gonna cook them for 15 minutes in the oven and then we will flip the pieces of chicken over and cook them for another 15 minutes. So this is just to get them nice and crispy and browned. This is a little bit of a labor intensive process and it's why I haven't made them in so long, but it's so worth it every once in a while to make this because the chicken comes out so tender. A lot of times when you think, or when I think of, I should say, chicken breast, it can be really dry and this is not dry at all. And it's just one of our family favorites and I'm glad that I made it because it had been so long since I made it. So you can see how nice and browned I'm trying to get these little pieces of chicken. Basically we're kind of making like little chicken nuggets. I just had the thought now that this is really just a basic technique of taking your chicken breast, cutting them in cubes, dredging them in a flour or cornstarch mixture and then an egg and then frying them. And then you have this beautiful chicken nugget. And you could really do whatever you want once you have these little chicken nuggets. You could just put them in the oven and finish cooking them and then serve them with a dipping sauce. And that could be your dinner, homemade chicken nuggets. Or you could put a bunch of different sauces on there. You could put a honey mustard glaze would be delicious, a maple ginger glaze, a buffalo sauce would be really good. I, I'm just thinking now that, wow, creativity could be endless when it comes to this technique. 
it is a little labor intensive and it's not something I'm going to do every Tuesday night for dinner, but it is really, really good and it's worth the effort and it does make really good leftovers. So I have one pan of the chicken going. It takes about four or five minutes on each side. So that gives me a few minutes instead of just standing, I can go ahead and get some hand wash dishes done so that when we're done eating dinner, we can just call it and be done. So typically I'm the one that does the cooking for dinner and then I try to get the kitchen as cleaned up as much as possible. It doesn't always happen, but it's nice when it does. And then once the dinner is done, Josh is usually the one that then packages up the leftovers. And usually what he does is he packages this, them up in portions for either lunch or dinner. So this is obviously way more chicken than Josh and I can eat in one seating. And so t this is going to be some really good lunch or some really good dinner for the rest of the week. I typically only cook dinner about three times a week. And then the rest of the week, we either eat the, the what I already cooked as leftovers, or I take, if I cook something and I can re judge it up into a different dinner, then I do that. But usually on a typical week, I only cook dinner three times so that I don't have to cook every night of the week and we just eat what I've already cooked. So here is the chicken all browned and beautiful. I'm gonna pour the sauce on this chicken and then this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna flip all the chicken, make sure it's all coated in the sauce. And then we're gonna let it cook for another 15 minutes. And this chicken comes out so tender. It is so, so good. And I'm definitely gonna experiment with some different sauces on this technique. So here is our green beans. I'm gonna go ahead and get those cooking as well. I'm just gonna steam those, nothing fancy, just steamed green beans. These are my new favorite knives. I absolutely love them. They are incredible. Look at that. A nice, thick, beautiful <laughs> Rice Krispie treat. These are very, very <laughs> generous size Rice Krispies. These are gonna be perfect for them because they're still a little bit warm. I did flip the chicken once and it is done. It smells so good. I'm so glad I made this. It is a little labor intensive, but I was able to kind of clean the kitchen and do some other things. And definitely that way of doing a bunch of them at one time really makes it a lot easier. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a delicious dinner. So the green beans are done as well. The rice is done. The kitchen is basically clean. I did get the dishwasher started. So the way that we serve it, Josh is not home yet, so I'm not gonna dish it up quite yet, is we just put some rice down in a bowl and then we top it with some chicken. And Josh and I like to kind of put, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> the green beans are done. I'm not gonna put any butter or anything on them. I'm just gonna keep them plain because the, the sweet and sour sauce has plenty of flavor. But we usually will put the rice down, some green beans, our chicken, and then pour some of the sauce over the top, and it's so good. I wanna taste one of these pieces of chicken. The chicken is so tender. The sauce is pretty runny right now, but as it cools down just a little bit, it's gonna thick it up and kind of become more of a thicker sweet and sour. It's not gonna be as sticky or as gloopy as like a one if you go out and get sweet and sour but it's a little bit more runny than that, but it will cools down. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat this. It's been so long. It's probably been, well, Josh and I have been married for eight years and I never made it at the last house. So it's probably been at least, um, and I didn't make it when we remodeled our kitchen at the first house. So it's probably, it's probably been like six years since I've made this. I don't know why there's something about this recipe the chicken is so tender and sometimes when you think about 
chicken breasts that can be kind of dry and not tender. But I think it's the pan frying them and then baking them in the oven. They're just so tender and so good. Mmm. I'm so glad I took the time to make that today. The little bit of heat, adding that little bit of sriracha really helps balance the sweet and sour with a little bit of heat, which I love. But if your family doesn't like spicy, leave that out altogether. But you could even put just like maybe a pinch of red pepper flakes just to get just a teeny tiny bit of it, but not too much. That's not too spicy. Josh doesn't really like spicy stuff. I love spicy. I'll put a bunch more sriracha on the top of mine. But for him, that's probably absolutely perfect. So I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I can pop these recipes down in the description box if you're interested in them. And I'm just really grateful that you are here and you took time out of your day to spend time with me. I appreciate it and I appreciate you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I can pop up a couple of my other videos here. If you wanna go enjoy those between now and my next upload, we got so many things done today. We got a couple, we got dinner and dessert. We got a couple extra marinated meats in the freezer and we took care of some of the stuff from Costco so that it will last a long time. So when we're ready to make kombucha or tacos, we will be ready for that. So thank you for being here. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.